Hello everyone, welcome to my channel that is basics of electrical and instrumentation. Today I am going to discuss about transformers. We often see transformer in our surrounding, from that we get power supply to our home. So what it is, how it works, on what principle it works, I am going to discuss all this today. So please, before that please do subscribe to my channel. First of all the basic definition part, that is transformer is a static device which transfers electrical energy from one circuit to another without having any direct electrical connection and with the help of mutual induction between wind two windings. Yes, here two points we have to remember. First one is a static device. Why it is called a static device? Because it does not have any rotating or moving parts like motors. That's why it is a static device. And second one is without having any direct electrical connection. Yes, it does not have any electrical connection from primary winding to secondary winding but it works on the principle of electromagnetism. Now it transfer power from one circuit to another without changing its frequency. Yes, frequency never changes. If we are giving 50 Hz to the primary side, the output will be 50 Hz. If we are giving 60 Hz, the output will be 60 Hz. But the voltage level is increases or decreases here. Yes, voltage level either increase or decrease. If it will increase, it is a step up transformer. If it will decrease, it is a step down transformer. Now I am going to show an example on which principle it works. For that I am going to take a winding and we know that if the current passes through any conductor it produces magnetic field around it. So here we are giving an alternating supply and it is coming here and it is coming out from here. So it, it is also producing a magnetic field. I have shown one this side only but it will be this side all, also. So if we will bring another winding inside this field so some portion of this flux because it is varying nature because we are giving an alternating supply so the flux is also alternating in nature and if we will bring another winding inside this field so some portion of the flux will link with the secondary winding and it will induce secondary EMF in this in this winding also and if we will connect a load we will get a very small current that is IS current in this circuit. So two points we have to remember here. First one is flux is alternating in nature and continuously varying its amplitude and direction which induces EMF that is ES in second winding. And improper linking of flux from first to second winding. Yes, there is no proper linking of flux because air is not good medium for flux transfer. That's why a very small portion of flux will link here and this IS is a very small current. To overcome upon this problem, to rectify this, we will put this, this winding upon, upon a core material. So the maximum flux that will produce here will link with the secondary side. So here we will get maximum flux will link here. Now I am going to talk about the construction. For construction mainly three parts are required. First one is the core material and second is the windings two windings and on the one is the core material. Uh, for the core material we use soft iron core. Why we use soft iron core? Because it gives low reluctance pass. So the maximum flux which has been producing here will link with the secondary side. And we use a core material that is laminated sheets. It is a thin laminated sheets. Why we are using thin laminated sheets? To reduce the core losses. There is two type of losses that occurs in transformer. One is copper losses and second is core losses. To reduce core losses, we use laminated sheets. In core losses, there are two types of losses, eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. So we are what, what is happening here, we are giving an alternating supply here and it is uh, alternating supply when it is coming here and it is coming out from here. So it is producing a varying flux that is going like this and when it crosses the secondary side it will link with the secondary side and induces secondary EMF in the secondary winding. Again when it comes here and it crosses the primary side so it will induce a primary EMF in this primary side and that is back EMF and it is denoted as EP. NP is the number of turns in the primary side, ES is the number, ES is the secondary EMF that is induced in the secondary side, NS is the number of turns in the secondary side, IS is the current in the secondary side and VS is the voltage across the load which have, we have connected. 
now we have to remember one thing that Faraday's law of EMI states that the magnitude of induced EMF in a coil is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linking the coil. So we get two relation here. That is ES. ES is the EMF in the secondary side which is equal to minus of NS d phi by dt. Here we are differentiating flux with respect to time. And EP is EMF in the primary side which is equal to minus of NP d phi by dt. So why we are using minus sign? Because as per the Lenz law effect always oppose the cause. And if we divide each other so it will cancel each other and we get an important relation that is ES equal ES by EP equal to NS by NP. Let's suppose it is equation A. Now as we are assuming it is an ideal transformer so there is no losses. Is, that's why ES equal to VS and EP equal to VP. Now substituting these in above equation we will get VS by VP equal to NS by NP. Suppose it is equation 1. Again we know that in transformer power remains same. So power in primary side that is PP equal to PS power in secondary side power equal to voltage into current so VP IP equal to VS and IS after rearranging we will get VS by VP equal to IP by IS suppose it is equation 2 now comparing first and second equation we get Vs by Vp equal to Ns by Np equal to Ip by is it is a very important relation that we have to remember thank you